So uh, again, we're trying to analyze uh, this in terms of PI and charge. So the first thing they said is to determine the charge of the peptide at a pH of two, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's the other reason why there's no point trying to use shortcuts, because they're not just going to ask you for the PI, they can also ask you for other questions. Okay. So the best way to go through this is we, just, uh, we do have to write down all the pKa's. So we need the N-terminus pKa for aspartic acid. which is 9.6. All right, and aspartic acid also has a side chain, and its side chain has a pKa of 3.7. I'm going to try to get through this quickly, but if you guys can double check me, that would be good. All right, um, arginine. Oh, wait, you don't count the Oh, you do. Arginine side chain has a 12.5. Leucine, uh, no side chain. Lysine, no acidic or basic side chain. Aline, I don't think proline has anything going on, does it? Nope. I don't think threonine has anything going on. Valine, phenylalanine, serine, alanine, alanine. Tyrosine has a side chain of 10.1. Proline, nothing. Leucine. Lysine has a side chain of 10.5 with a C. Alanine, valine, arginine, 12.5, and a C. Tryptophan, I don't think that's anything. No. Proline, tyrosine was 10.1. And histidine. Without a C? That's right. Because remember, this is acidic. It's got the, uh, the OH group that's acidic. Then histidine, 6.1 with a C. And there's also the carboxy end, which was 1.8. And I guess I'd maybe I would put a C here for this N terminus to show that this is a basic uh, N terminus over here, even though they, they don't put in the C for the N terminus because you're supposed to know that all the N terminuses are basic. Okay. Uh, now we should figure out the charge when this is completely protonated. Excuse me? Uh, so now there's two things we have to do. One thing we have to do is list all the pKa's in uh, order. So the smallest pKa here was 3.7. And then we have 6.1. Don't we have 1.8 to begin with? 1 point, oh, good, thank you. 1.8 should go at the start. 6, 9.6, 10.1, 10.1, 10.5, 12.5, 12.5. So that gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's correct. Now we want to figure out what the charge would be if this was completely protonated. Well, we know that under um, when this is completely protonated, the acidic portions are neutral, right? Acidic portions are neutral when they're protonated. So only the basic portions will have a charge. So this would be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5. Wait, because you have 5 C's? And C the 1.8 is going to be minus. I'm just saying that when the peptide is completely protonated, it will have a charge of 0.5. This is to, uh, I'm not linking this up with oh, the PKAs yet. Right, right, okay. Here's the list of PKAs. Now when this is completely protonated, all the basic portions will be protonated. Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 basic portions. So when it's completely protonated, you have a plus 5. And then we simply make a list. Plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, 0. Maybe we won't need to go further than that. And we put in the pKa's. 1.8, 3.7, 6.1, 
9.6, sorry. 10.1, 10.1. If necessary, we can go further than that. All right, so um, what's the PI? PI is 10.1. It's very easy to average 10.1 and 10.1. Is that the answer that you guys got when you did this? Um, we didn't give you it. I didn't try. Okay. All right, so the PI would be 10.1. Uh, and the other question they asked was? Have a pH of negative 2. Oh, no, positive 2. Determine the charge of this peptide at a pH of 2. Well, if we were at a pH of 2, that would be between these two numbers here. That would be between these two numbers. That would give us a plus 4 charge. So that would be the answer to the charge at a pH of 2. What if they asked you, say, for what the charge was at a pH of um, 11 or 12? Well, then I just extend this chart over here. Um, to save time, I've only done the first one, two, three, four, five, six. But, you know, let's finish that off. Now, what I was trying to show is that even for a very long peptide, it doesn't take that long to be organized here. Because notice that even though this was long, they purposely made only a few amino acids have acidic or basic side chains. There's only a few amino acids here that have acidic or basic side chains, so there's not really as much work as it seems like. So the organized way to do this is write out all the amino acids, then write down all the pKa's. Go ahead and put down a little c next to everything that's basic. Don't forget that the N-terminus is basic, even though it doesn't have a little c in the table. You're expected to know that the N-terminus is basic. Then you list all the pKa's in order. List all the pKa's in order. Figure out what the charge would be um, when it's fully protonated. Notice that the charge is just the number of little c's. When it's fully protonated, all of the basic um, functionalities will have a plus charge. So if you just count the number of little c's in your list, that'll give you the charge when it's fully protonated, as long as you remember that the N-terminus is also basic, even though the, the table doesn't remind you of that. Uh, and then you simply make this list, and above each arrow, you put the, P the, the pKa's in order as well. So um, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it shouldn't take you forever to, to do this way. 